Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, let's see here. So once more, I have to um, <laughs> install once, Delirium again. Once more into the breach. Whatever. Once more into the breach, yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so in general, uh, what this section is going to be is uh, talking about biomodels and about like uh, SVML, which I mentioned in passing the other day. Um, SVML is the computer readable, exchangeable format for systems biology mo models. It's the systems biology markup language. Um, it was, it's been around, like, is it literally 20 years ago at this point? 21, probably. Um, uh, Herbert was involved with its creation back in the day. Um, let me restart the session. 22 years. 22 years. Yeah. Um, and models that were created 22 years ago are still um, importable and runnable in, in Tellurium today. Um, even though Tellurium didn't exist at the time. So it's, it, it is a, a nice long-term format for your models um, to be able to continue to use them over time. So um, there is a database of models uh, from the, from that was established 15-ish years ago, a little bit more, um, that is a repository of mostly SVML models, like just in, the last few months, they've been sort of starting to expand beyond just SVML. But in general, like a lot of their uh, a lot of their models, there are, are SVML models. There are there is a curated branch and a non-curated branch. And in fact, I'm just going to go to biomodels models.net. Um, there are this is this is the biomodels website. Um, you can search for whatever you like. Um, I don't know if I call these this or something. And and you can find find a, a variety of models um, for for whatever you're whatever you're interested in in searching. Um, there are let's see here. So you'll see here there's the non-curated branch and the manually curated branch. Um, if you want. Uh, the non-curated branch means that they are, are in some form of, of uh, in some state from the usually from the author of the model it's, itself. Uh, it hasn't been fully checked out, um, and when it's curated, that means that they there is a published paper that has a model, and the model can reproduce at least one figure from the paper, and that's been verified by a, an independent curator. So if we say we only want the manually manually curated ones. Um, it'll find us those models, and then we can go to particular ones and look at them. So this is Biomodel 61 here. Um, and it says it's, it can be used to reproduce figure six. If we look at the files, um, we can see all, all the files that are with it. We are actually in the middle of a project to try to update these files, because some this the model file itself is always fine. And these other files were not always examined very closely. So we have gone through and validated all of them. Hey, Lucien, like, can you, uh, somebody ask, can you zoom in a bit? Oh, yes, sure. Shift no. plus or whatever it is. Yep. There you go. There you go. Yep. Is that better? Right. Yeah, that's better. OK. All right. Um, so yes, so, the, so today, <laughs> the model files will always be fine. And like in two weeks, everything else is going to be great also. Um, and the way you can get these into Tellurium, the easy way is you can get them from, uh, from this download button. If you right click and copy link address and you go to here, I'm going to put in, I will add a new code thing and say, S that URL. Oops, sorry here. 
R equals that, and then R, R simulate R. That was the one that I sort of randomly looked at. I don't know how this is going to look, but yeah, there we go. It's not the most clever thing. It has like all the species in the model, whereas only some of them may be actually of use, probably these ones that are wiggling. Um, this may not be the right time frame to look at them. Those are five seconds, maybe not, the, not very useful. But in general, I can grab a model, I can simulate, and then I can figure out how to get my simulation better to better match figure six or whatever. So in this example here, um, we looked at a particular model, uh, the Yana Wolf uh, model of respiratory oscillations. Uh, this is a, a still from the, from the paper itself. So this is obviously like a, a pretty big complicated model, like X, it, 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 there's multi, multiple co compartments, which we haven't even talked about compartments yet. Um, and if we do, if we run this, we should get that figure again. So here, this this was the this was BioModels ninety. I went to the files. I right clicked the URL and plate pasted that in here. Um, I knew that I wanted from time zero to hundred, and I wanted the oxy was the was the main thing that was that was being recorded over time over time. Um, and I made it larger and I put the X label and Y label in there. So. A question, Lucien. Um, yeah. You use load SPML model here, but then you use something called load S in the one yes. above. Yep, they are synonyms of each other. You can use one okay. or the other. And load S, the S means SPML. I S is for SPML, just like load A is antimony, yeah. Okay. You can, and you, the, similarly, there is a load antimony model, I think, uh, function oh, yeah. if, if you don't want to, okay. the shorthand of the load A. Um, the saved model from the questions here, it is indeed, it is the initial state of the model. So it, it doesn't have the instructions for how to recreate figure six. It is just the initial state, right? Um, there is another whole standard, which I'm not gonna talk about too much today, but just so you know that it exists called said ML for the simulation experiment description markup language. Is said dash ML in that chat. Um, and that will actually have all the instructions you need to reproduce an actual figure from the from the paper. And and actually like upgrading and validating that set ML is the main thing that we've been trying to do for bottom models over the, like in bits and pieces, but over the last like year and a half, I think. Um, because set ML didn't exist when Biomodels Archive started, and they have sort of continued the tradition of mostly focusing on the model itself and not on what you do with the model. Um, but some of that information can be extracted from the files that they happen to save and stuff. Um, anyway, obviously, if you want to reproduce a model, um, you need those instructions as well. And if you don't have them, you have to figure them out on your own, uh, which can be awkward and difficult uh, at times. So, yeah. So if we want to, what does this do here? So in this, so this thing, we're getting the floating species, floating species concentration IDs, which are like oxy, A3, the, all, all these different things. And then we exported to a file called wolf.txt, which will like in, Colab it is is like saving on Google Drive. I assume I don't even know how it how it works. Um, and then you can load a that wolf wolf .txt and and then simulate a plot, and that you'll see all the different things that is that it's happening. So here, let me make this slightly smaller so we can see it again. So we were plotting we were looking at oxy earlier, which is blue. And I don't know which blue it is, but it's probably this one because that's the one that looks like it was before. And this one must be OAH. And this brown one is ETH and stuff. Um, so the point is just that you can get these things you, and you can look at them in antimony also. Um, in fact, let's do that. Um, right here. Where can I, where can I do it here? Okay, there we go. 
So All right, we have to scroll back up because it has a lot of stuff in here. So this is um, that wolf model in antimony form. So you'll see it has three compartments, um, which again, I haven't mentioned. Um, and it has all these different species, many of them in compartment one, some of them in compartment zero and some in compartment two. Um, the ones with the dollar signs are the ones that are fixed, um, the boundary species. It has some assignment rules here. Um, a two C, so a a C is apparently like the total amount of a two C and a three C, and then so it's figuring out a two C as the as the difference between those two things. Um, similarly, n one this is all n, and this is that's split into n one and n two. This is all s that's split into s one and s two, and this is all a m that's split into a two m and a three m. Because um, some of the reactions, presumably, here, let's see if we can. All right, it didn't use actually use AM much. It just said AM equals two. So sure. So a two M is that what's actually being used? Ah, okay, yeah. So A2M here, we have a react, an equation with it. It's being produced here, like symbolically, but it, with, the, with the fact that it's fixed because it's actually just set to the total amount of AM minus A3M or something. And then it's being used in this rate equation. All right. Um, let me see here. This is a other things about antimony that I haven't necessarily talked about, but it's a good as time as any to talk about them. Um, these are all the constants. You can use units in antimony. It is a good modeling practice to use units in your in your models because um, it can tell you when things when because the units should match. And if you just like are pulling numbers from the literature without looking at the units, you're probably going to get a unit mismatch. Um, and you have to make sure everything is converted into the same time scale, the term, same unit scale. Um, SVML just assumes that you've gotten it correct. And antimony also just assumes that you've gotten it correct. You can you have to ask it specifically to to if if the if your units are correct uh, se separately to make sure to do, go through that validation step. These are annotations. Um, these are particular things. So what CO actually is. So CO is one of the compartments. So if we click on this, we should be able to go. Oh, no, it has no idea what that is. All right. Um, let's do this specifically. Yeah, just type, just type, yeah, just type the go to. Yeah. I just want, <laughs> I didn't want, to, OK. Uh... There, gene ontology. Okay, there we go. Which apparently has been renamed to get a new number, um, but it like it used to be that. Um, so it is the extracellular extracellular region, as you might expect from the original model, um, which was where are we here? There we go. Which was C C zero. We go back up things on the screen here. Go back up to this. Um, we have we have like the cellular, the, the cell, the probably mitochondria, and then the external where this the, the sulfur and stuff and oxygen is coming from. So that's the extracellular stuff that they were talking about from that. Um, or, or, so we'll be doing yeah. So just for the rest of you, you'll uh, be doing an entire session on this kind of annotation stuff tomorrow. Right. Um, and showing you how you can add your own annotations. The point of these annotations is to help people identify what the different components are. I mean, who right. knows what C1 is and C0 is and C2. Right. So, so this is a, again, it. sort of computer readable standard form of saying like, this is the extracellular matrix. Like, um, so anyone else any other computer reading it will know and be able to say like, oh, 
these these two models have the same elements in them. Or right? if you're looking for calcium, you don't have to look for all the different spellings of calcium. You can just say like, give me things with this particular term, and find those models. Um, so yeah, lots of annotation-y things. So if you if you import a model from from BioModels into Antimony, you'll get a lot of this text. And I tried to put it at the bottom so that the main model is here at the top. Um, so mostly. The, like the functional parts are are here at the top, the assignment rules, the reactions, and then the initializations, and then all the other um, units and everything else. I should add, um, mm -hmm. I think it's worth mentioning, uh, uh, there's a website we have called Make SPML, and that lets you yeah. also search biomodels and to quickly translate from SPML to antimony and vice versa. Um, so you don't have to use Python to do that. Uh, you can go to this website called Make SPML. Uh, should I put it in the link? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me find it here. Make SPML. Oh, there it is. So I'll put in the link. Um, so there's a search box in the top right hand corner. You can just, you know, search glycolysis or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can find the model. And then um, it'll bring. The oh. biomodels all stores everything as SPML, which is not very readable. And so this site then will then translate that directly to antimony. You can see what it is. Sure. But yeah. So if you type something there, like glycolysis, whatever you want. Yeah. So there we go. There's a... yeah, you can and in fact, those. what were we looking at? Like the Jow, Jow Wolf 62 2000. Or something? Yeah, no. Wolf 2000. Yeah, 206. Yeah, there we go. Wolf 2000, like with the constellations. And indeed, here's our. Oh, that's a different one. This is a slightly different one. A different, 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 one. A different, yeah, different version matter. of the same model. Yeah, probably. it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, so yeah. you can see there's the antimony on the left and the um, SPML on the right. Right. You, you can cut and paste that then if you want and do whatever you want with it, of course. Right. So here, let's let's go ahead and do this. So I was going to do a little demonstration with a really simple model here. Let's say that you're um, <laughs> you have some sort of medical crisis with a some with a, a with an outbreak or all around you. So you're like, oh, what is there some sort of model that would tell me what's going on here? So um, you type zombies into here. And look, there's there's biomodels 882. Is that actually yes? And here's my here's here there indeed was a, a zombie model out there. Uh, one of which was that if you look on the biomodel site, you'll see that there were three non-curated versions. It's all from the same paper. Um, and look at this. So let's just take this part of the model and go back here. And I'm just going to go to the end and start from that. So just to make sure. Okay. Paste that in. And and indeed, look at that. Um, right. So as we see, the the people that were susceptible are decreasing in in number over time, back to, to zero, and the zombies and removal, which is the dead. Um, are going are going up. So if we look, actually, I have the actual like above. I have the actual paper itself. No, not here. I think did I already load it? No, of course I didn't. Okay. Um, let's see here. There should be. Um, yeah, here's the title. Okay. Here's the title. We're just going to go to scholar.google.com, paste in that title, and there it is. And then there's a PDF, and we can just click on it and look at it. So um, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the, uh, the, the picture of the model. Um, and you have your, your three populations, your susceptible, your zombies, and your removal, or the dead. And these are all the, all the reactions that go into it. So you'll see that this is a, a closed system with the only change being this, this 
a rate of this pi here at which new people are born. So, so yes, this is an SIR model. Um, um, we have people being born, people being turned into zombies, people dying are the three ways that which people are, are changing here. Your zombies are created from people being converted into zombies at a rate of B times S times Z. So it's um, it's a like a product, like the more zombies there are, the more they make, the more they turn people into zombies. There's a rate at which zombies rise from the dead. And there's the rate at which zombies die mediated by S. So like people are trying to kill zombies and the S and Z. So the, this this beta and alpha difference here sort of relates like how much people are turning into zombies versus zombies are dying. But one thing about this model, as you may, so, so we found it, we understand what's going on. We, we were re able to reproduce. In fact, let's go to a figure. Um, so here's a figure, it goes, in, in fact, it's, it is our default time course from zero to five. Uh, the susceptible go down and the zombies go up. And we had the, so if we go back to our own, back to this, um, that we have reproduced the figure from the paper. So then as you try to figure out um, if, if the model is good or not, you st start to say like, is it reproducible? Yes, we were able to reproduce the figure. But then like, does it make sense? Is it, oh, oh, so separately then, I'm backing up. Is it reproducible? Yes, I was able to reproduce a figure from the paper. Is it annotated? Um, does it does it have sort of standard ways of describing things? And we're going to look at that. Is this annotated? It has indeed some some uh, some things here. Let's see if this is actually doable. Looks like it's working. Susceptibility, right. That's the inborn state disposing to a disease, group of diseases. So indeed, that's a, that's a, that's a, it, it was indeed annotated to be, to say like, this is a, not only does the word susceptible show up in the title, but it is a, an, an official term for these things. I don't know if zombies are gonna have an official ontology anywhere. That seems somewhat unlikely, yes. So the things that were, so the removal is the dead and the birth property is, is here and it doesn't have a standard and ontology for zombies because no one has managed to put that into a, an ontology yet, but the other parts are. Um, and even susceptible to zombie or death. Oh yeah, that's the same thing. That's a 16505, which I'm not sure. So that is, so it's annotating the actual um, reactions with these terms, which is not necessarily the right thing to do. But anyway, but they, so again, when you're like looking at the annotations, that's the sort of thing you'll do. And then we'll, this is actually like, not for this model in particular, but this is the sort of thing we're gonna be looking at on Thursday at the hackathon, at the reproducibility hackathon. Yeah. I'm gonna zoom in on this. Yeah, bit. and tomorrow there'll be a whole session on yeah. annotation. Yeah. Um, finally, you might say like, does this model make sense? Um, and then, and that means like after you can reproduce it, you can start to play around with things and say like, well, what about this? Or what about this other? And one thing, I, I have noticed playing with this model or skipping to the end is that because this is, is a completely closed loop, it doesn't really matter what these rates are. All dead rise as zombies. There's no way to permanently kill any, anything. So because it is a closed loop and because, and because like the dead just rise as zombies, like regardless of how they died, like this person can never encounter a zombie, can die, and then can be raised as a zombie. Um, so there's it's it's the model by its very structure is an inevitable that the zombies are going to take over, basically. And we can show that by starting to try other simulations or the like changing changing some of the values. Um, 
for one thing, we may notice that like, what's the, like, there should be pe people being born on this. This looks kind of like it's a, reaching some sort of steady state. If we go to a hundred, um, what happens, what happens then? And indeed it sort of looks by steady state, but these are starting to go up. If we go a lot more, you'll see that there, it actually wasn't at a steady state, it was fooling us. The zombies are just taking over and the dead are actually at a, at a steady state. Um, as long as there are more people being born from somewhere, um, then, the, then the zombies keep on going up. So that's, I'll, I'll, we, we don't have a, a lot of time. Th those are the sorts of things that you can do with, with biomodels. You need to look, sort of expand the, the scope of what they were doing. And that's, that's actually another thing about reproducibility is like, what is the scope of the model? Like, what is it good for? Like, what happens if I extend things out? What if I, it happens if I like try going over multiple generations in the, in the past, does it still work? And the answer here is no, it definitely doesn't. Um, so, I think that's good with that. Anyone else have questions? And I can. Should we take a break before switching to the yeah. advanced antimony? Oh yeah. Quick? Yeah. Okay. I need a coffee. Sure. Um, so we'll be back at uh, five two, five to the hour. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? You want your hands up? Yeah. All right. Good. And if anyone has questions, feel free to like put them in the chat or chat out loud. We can we'll be around. Right. I may if I'm on camera, I'm here. I can. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back at five two. Sounds good.